Well, welcome to the latest edition of TV on the Net. I'm your host, Tom Vartani, and today's show brought to you by AmeriCube Credit Union for every day for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland by Right Angle Creek Farm and Marathon. All natural, pasture-raised Angus beef from our farm to your table. By the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of TV on the Net. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at royalautogroup.com. By Yemen Real Estate at the entrance to Yemen Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C. Make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C. at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary-specific options. Nikki C's, your grab-and-go specialists. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. For over 30 years, Graftex has continued its dedication to servicing customers' needs for innovative graphic design custom and printed apparel and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Riley's Cafe and Marathon, open seven days a week for sit and dining in a friendly family atmosphere. Riley's also offers carryout and catering for some events. Check them out online at Riley'sCafe.com or call 607-849-6434. And by Isaac Merker Studio, handling all your photographic needs in Central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at IsaacMerker.com or on their Facebook page. Well, this has happened to work out well. We have an extra for Wednesday uh, we had Adam, most months we're going to have Adam, and that would be our high school stuff. Well, we had extra one, and I was actually up asked, if you have an extra time between now and October, could we do a podcast? And, uh, well, kind of worked with this woman for 17 years when I was in the business. And uh, so I said, sure, because obviously uh, she's uh, she pretty much runs the uh, Cortland Regional Sports Council now, and... Uh, so we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the council, which has been around since 2004. But before we get into that, of course, the recent thing on everybody's mind is the Gutcha Sport uh, Lumber Sports Complex and the uh, renovations they want to do, the upgrading they want to do. And I've heard different things myself. To be honest, I've heard different things. I've heard it's going to be two multi-purpose fields. I've heard uh, some people say, you know, I've heard now that it might be two baseball fields, but they're going to be more multi-purpose. Um, with uh we kind of got a hint of it in the olympics this year where you you could put a fence to make it a softball baseball kind of combo complex and i know that's one thing they wanted to do at least baseball wise get a couple more fields there to host tournaments and prep baseball reports getting involved in now so uh michelle phelps is going to be here we're gonna and like i said before we talk about the council let's go ahead and talk about that because there's lots of different information out there, and some some people are saying, "Well, it's going to cost us a ton of money," and it's really not up, you know, supposedly. So, I thought this would be a good time to talk about that and kind of set the record straight on it. Right. Thank you, Tom, and thank you for allowing us this opportunity to talk to the community about the Cortland Regional Sports Council and what we do. So. To address Gutchess, you know, when we first started this project, um, we had a feasibility study done. And that feasibility study is what we're using kind of as our blueprint as we move forward. It was always our intent to find some sort of partner that could help us with the baseball tournaments. You know, I'm a one-person operation. There's no way that I can bring what PBR can bring to the table. So when we started working with them, it really turned into – a relationship that we didn't expect even from the beginning. So the simple fact that that they can bring six to eight tournaments here over a two or three month period, I mean that's a lot of economic impact. And the whole reason that Gutchess was developed was for the economic impact. It's a park, yes, there's a pavilion, there's stuff for the community to do, walking trails, 
but the focus of the park was always to be for the economic impact of the community. And we kind of gotten to see it. The Cortland Crusher, of course, play a lot of their games there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Cor- Cortland High has gone in there and gets away with playing almost every game now. Cor- Homer's come over and played a couple of games there at times now. Yeah. I know TC3. TC3 is upgrading their – they want to do some more upgrading their facilities now. And, of course, they're looking at that kind of the multi-use feel for baseball, softball, mainly because – they were because they said, "Well, we've already been able to bring a baseball game over to Gutchess to play if we needed to, but we can't do that with softball. So softballs are getting canceled. So now that's why they're kind of they're hoping for something similar to that TC three now. And of course, they've been a partner in a lot of stuff that we'll talk about later. They have along with the local high schools and SUNY Cortland at times. But uh, right. yeah, so so is it real? Is it going to be right now? Is it two baseball fields? Or I guess I know they want baseball fields and then they want some." other multi-purpose fields like for other things too down the road and there's plenty of room to do all of that really right there's there's a a lot of room it's a hundred acres which was a a land swap with gutchess lumber company so we certainly got the better end of that deal um but the two new fields that they're talking about putting in um would be multi-purpose in the sense it could be used for little league softball and baseball so we've been consulting with PBR because they're the experts in the business. If you're going to partner with someone, that's who you want to partner with, the best in the business, and that's what they are. So they've been helping us kind of uh, look at dimensions, look at um, the movable mounds, that kind of stuff. So all that's being incorporated in the design of those two new fields. Yeah, that and that that makes that makes total sense and they're, and they're not wrong it is a multi-purpose field it's just uh it's right. going to be more di- obviously diamond sports specific for now right but there are plans i know still as if you know more funding comes along or whatever comes available there is a talk about you know soft you know like a softball you know well be more soccer lacrosse and right you know i feel like a couple of fields like that because there is a room for them as well yeah it was always meant to be a phased project you know obviously we weren't going to develop the entire park all in one fell swoop so um trying to do the multi-purpose fields for soccer and lacrosse and field hockey some of that stuff would happen later in our phases so like we said there's a lot of of that misconception out there of uh, well, it's going to co- that, that's costing the cash mayors this much money now the way it is it's going to cost double that amount or more and it's not going to be you know it's they can't even pay out the one how they're going to do this it's the, the, that's the financial part is I think is where the biggest and that's what's got everybody up in arms well no it's going to be you know what are what's really kind of how that all going to work so I don't have the actual specific numbers those have to come from the town of Cortlandville but I can tell you that when we first started this project our goal was to find a partner that could take over maybe not take over but could offset the cost of the bond payment and that's exactly what PBR does that was the whole reason for us trying to push this partnership with them so there so there's very 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 minimal in impact to town of Cortlandville residents exactly. or anything like that and if we didn't have PBR we'd be out looking for other rental you know partners or other rental customers and then the town's going to end up having to pick up the the slack in terms of the payments so if we've got somebody that's willing to pay us x amount over the space of a year that's going to basically offset the bond payment i mean that's like the best that, that you could hope for and the town of Cortlandville is growing i mean they got you know ted testa park i was there when that went in and right the little league fields have been you know little league approved so they can host district tournaments and all that kind of stuff so you know it's, the little league fields are very nice you know they got a softball field that's kind of gets used for softball baseball the little kids baseball uh, you know there as well and then the, up above where you got you know where you could play have soccer and lacrosse and well, a couple areas really we could do right. soccer and lacrosse so that's a, a nice facility it's mm-hmm. kind of funny not that he's not busy enough already john mcnerney at the uh, Cortland youth bureau with just scheduling stuff that went on with all the local parks during different times of year, you know, he, I guess he kind of helps go over there. And he also, I believe, does help now kind of a little bit what's going on out at, uh, at Gutcha. So, uh, <laughs> so there's a lot for John to keep track of, but, you know, he's, he's you know, he's done a, a nice job with everything. Right. And we, we, you know, we try to work together. It's my job to bring sporting events to the community. I mean, that's what the sports council does. And so when we find tournaments, we find other things. John and I work together to make sure things get booked and, you know, everybody's got the right amount of of time there and, you know, paperwork's all done, all that stuff. And, of course, the 
the past 18 months has been a challenge well at least a challenge i'll say because if you know if, if people don't realize it there's been girls state soccer tournaments there's been girls uh, lacrosse turn state tournaments are hung are held uh really a lot of that goes through you know through, through suny Cortland with the sports council but through suny Cortland, but also tc3 gets involved in that homer and Cortland, and some of those sports they get involved in some of that stuff and for a while Cortland and with the use of all these the soccer fields in the areas was a host for the uh, youth soccer state so- the tournament they hosted a couple of those state cup yeah over the years the state cup and so that's uh so there's a lot of you know that's just some of the things then you throw in I guess also the Empire Senior Games have been a a regular you know have mm-hmm. been a regular in Cortland for many years there's a lot of stuff that you know in a short time it's, I mean, you know, 17 years doesn't seem short but a lot of stuff that you know has come to this area and again like you say it's all the economic impact you know you see more hotels getting built you know a couple more restaurants have gone up and different things so yeah it's yeah maybe people seems like it's an inconvenience to them or it might be on their you know to them down the road but the economic impact like you say the hotels the people stay they come for the weekends and there's right. a lot of money to be made and that's exactly why the sports council exists i mean that's our 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 goal is to put heads in beds. You know, it's it's the reason why we're here. We don't make any money off anything that we do. Any of these events that we bring to town is strictly for the economic impact. And if we didn't have baseball happening this past summer and last summer, you know, there wouldn't have been anybody staying in the hotels practically. You know, baseball was really one of the only things taking place definitely last summer. You know, and even this summer as things started to ramp back up, um, baseball was still considered a safe sport you know it was moderate risk or low risk and so everybody felt comfortable in putting those tournaments on that's another reason why it's attractive for us so as you said michelle starting in 2004 the Cortland regional sports council was created um that was that the main goal of when how that all come about kind of excuse me how that all come about and you know what you know led to the formation of it to begin with yeah so it it actually started as a partnership between SUNY Cortland and the community. We hosted um, in 2002, I don't know if you recall, but we helped Syracuse host the Empire State Games. That's back when the state was still running them. And so we did a few of the events down here. They did some events up there. And people started to realize, hey, this you know brings a lot to the community in terms of spending. It's all outside money. So not only does it help you know, our hotels and restaurants and stores, it helps our sales tax. So a group was formed. Um, Eric Bitterbaum actually weighed in because he was familiar with doing uh, a sports council or a, a sports organization like ours um, in his previous job where he started before he came to, to Cortland. And so Eric kind of gave us a little bit of a blueprint, which helped. And as concerned community members, we had a group of people that put this together, and um, it just kind of took off from there. There was a, a committee that was put together to hire the director. I was fortunate enough to be chosen, and I've been here ever since. So it's been 17 years that I've been doing this. <laughs> and I think sometimes people don't even realize that we exist, you know, or they confuse us with some of the other organizations that are here in town. So I think finally, now that it's been 17 years, people are starting to, to understand what it is that we do. But, you know, it's like I said before, it's my job to bring sporting events here. Um, some things we've partnered with uh, SUNY Cortland, TC3, the high schools, and we really could not do this without them. You know, we need their venues and the fact that they're willing to work with us and allow us to, to bid on things and to go out and find things to bring to the community um, really shows that they're interested in this partnership. And I know one of the biggest benefit has to be because now Cortland, Cortland, of course, they have a turf field. Homer's got their turf field. TC three's got the the multi-purpose turf field, in which and they send their thinking going turf for baseball and softball down the road. But uh, mm-hmm. and of course, all the facilities SUNY Cortland has uh, they they this makes and Cortland being kind of in the center of the state, just below being below Syracuse, south of Syracuse. It's an ideal place to bring a lot of things that is, makes it centrally located. It really is. And I think, you know, one of the benefits that we offer when we actually put in bids for things, because we 
you know, sometimes that's required. We have to put in the distance we are from Buffalo, the distance we are from Long Island, the distance we are from the Adirondacks. So it is definitely something that's taken into consideration, and we are in the middle of the state. There's not too many places you can find in New York State where you can find five or six turf fields that are within 10 to 15 minutes of each other, and we're easy to get around. It's not like you've got to get on a highway and spend 20 minutes in traffic to go five miles. So it definitely is a, a drawing card for us. And one good factor about it, uh, even though some of the sports, baseball, softball, it's, it's more contingent on it than a lot of other sports. Being turf fields, they all have lights. So you can have delays and you can play till 11 o'clock at night if stuff had to get pushed back a while because of weather. It's, yep. uh, it's, it's you know, the, the opportunities are just limitless that way. Yeah, it's definitely a benefit. And I think, you know, we've been fortunate enough um, – to be hosting like the girls state soccer championships the high school championships for a number of years girls lacrosse the uh, new york state public high school girls lacrosse championships have never been held anywhere else other than Cortland. we just had our 25th year of hosting them a couple years ago so things like that state cup we've been hosting that for i don't know 13 years now um things like that you you just you don't find them staying in one place too long. And there's got to be a reason why they keep coming back. And part of my job is to make sure that they do keep coming back. So we try to enhance the experience, make sure it's a positive experience. We want people to come back, maybe spend a couple days when they're traveling on their own personal vacations. So that's part of why we do what we do. We'll stick on, we'll stick on, yeah, we'll stick on some of the bigger stuff here at first. Like we said, uh, because it is, it's been tricky, you know, because the state likes to rotate certain stuff, especially the high school stuff. They like to rotate things around, and they've kind of done that with basketball and a few sports. Now they've started to do that a little bit more again, mm-hmm. and other than the traditional home that you'd go to every year. Well, of course, Syracuse used to be the hub for everything over the many years as well. Syracuse just used to be the big hub. But uh, what's it kind of like, like you said, there's, only a one, there's been only a one-shot deal really so far with the uh, Empire State games, but... Uh, the senior games has always been one that does seem to come back every June, whether mm-hmm. people realize not, it still gets keeps coming back every June. What's it what's it like to have to you know to go through to get that put together and to, just to make sure everything runs there smoothly? So in 2011, we had been helping the state run that since we started the sports council, but really it was the um, parks department from the state that ran the event. It's not like we ran it; we just helped them. So in 2011, when they disbanded that department within the state, they came to us and said, hey, do you want to take this over? And I thought, sure. You know, yeah. Had I known everything that goes into it, I mean, I still would have taken it, but I, I just did not realize all the, the time and the, the work that goes into it. I mean, we, we put on 18 different sports in the space of 10 days. And um, normally we draw somewhere between 1,200 to 1,400 athletes here. So it, it is uh, probably the biggest thing that we've undertaken since we started the Sports Council. But the gratitude and the, the thanks that we get from the competitors for doing it really makes it worthwhile. I think, as always, it's fun because yeah, everything in the senior games, unlike the, the regular Olympics or the Empire State games, everything is so is a lot more age-specific in the senior games. And uh, not like watching an 80-year-old guy run the 100-yard dash or uh, – play tennis and uh, of course now the big rage is pickleball, pickleball. I, I've, I've never heard about pickleball <laughs> I, I heard of it and then I got to know Katie Kaiser she's, she's my neighbor so that's the one one way I get to hear start hearing about it and uh, explain it to me how it works and stuff but it's uh it's it's unique I mean I know I guess the, maybe there's state pickleball championships now at some point so maybe that'll be a new new event to bring here yep it is and we've actually talked to the pickleball association about some regional events and that kind of stuff um we just haven't been able to make the timing work with the venues that are available so that's something we are working on but pickleball um has really grown as far as the senior games goes to be our second largest attended sport it's only behind volleyball in terms of number of athletes so this year, um, we hosted 350 people for the tournament, and we actually had to cut it off. We couldn't take any more. So I'm expecting next year, because next year will be a qualifying year. Every two years is a qualifying year. You have to go to a state games that's, um, that's sanctioned by 
the National Senior Games Association. So Cortland is the place in New York State where you have to go to participate if you want to participate in New York in order to qualify for nationals. So every two years, um, you can come to Cortland and qualify in your sport for nationals. So I expect nas next year, as they're trying to qualify for Pittsburgh in 2023, we'll have a, a huge turnout for pickleball. Um, and as far as what we said, uh, you know, the state cup, the youth soccer, you know, kind of a summer event that's been here a number of years. But let's not forget, kind of in the winter, there's a there's the best the basketball tournament that goes on, and it's kind of alternating between Cortland High and the the county uh, the, the county gym still. But I mean, there's room for expansion there if you you know look around the area too. But uh, you know, but there are things that go on other times of the year other than these main things you think about that happen during the mm -hmm. you know the, the warm weather in february we you know we host um the firemen's winter games the fascinating winter games and that's always a fun experience to watch all the firemen out there in their turnout gear and their teams and they're cheering each other on that really is a great weekend that happens in february and then like you said in march right around st patrick's day um, we host the Cortland shootout which is a big aau basketball I'm just kind of watching and seeing why your uh, mic is dropping out a little bit. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that, but uh, we'll do a quick pause. Yeah, well, I guess what we'll do, like I said, at first, we had another thing we had to deal with. Anyway, it's a little thing popped up here with here where we're interviewing Michelle. But, uh, again, yeah, her levels were dropping a little bit, so not totally sure if that AAU part uh, came out. So, yeah, let's go ahead and, again, you know, talk about that, you know, the AAU tournament and stuff. Yeah. So in March every year, right around St. Patrick's Day, we host a large AAU basketball tournament. And we've been doing that since, I believe, 2005 or 2006 was the first year we started that. So we had as many as 143 teams at one point that was entered into that tournament. And we use basically every court we can get our hands on in Cortland County. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. Um and you mentioned you mentioned of course the fire the, the the firemen's games that take place usually over Greek Peak every year. Exactly, they we have the first day out at Greek Peak, and they have a number of things that they do as teams. They're in full turnout gear. It's always a fun time. They like to cheer each other on. And then Sunday morning they play broom ball, usually at SUNY Cortland on the ice, and that's always something to watch too. <laughs> So for you, like you said, it was something you got involved with well, 17 years ago. You knew you became the executive director right out of the gate. And uh, I have always joked with you, it's the, with everything you do, you it has been a one-woman show, really. <laughs> you really have. You just not even like have one assistant or really one secretary to... It, it's, it seems like at some point that somebody will say, yeah, Michelle could use a little help here. Well, I mean, I've had um, assistants off and on throughout the year. Um, throughout the years that have been in, you know, for 10 or 12 hours a week to help. But definitely during senior games, um, I try to find somebody that will come in and help me because that that really you do need a couple of people to, just to do the paperwork that's involved, just the entering of the, you know, the entries that come in to us because not everybody wants to do it online, even though we try to um, encourage that. Not everybody likes to put their credit card in the computer. So, you have to remember the population that we're dealing with, you know, the age group we're dealing with. So they still want to send in uh, handwritten entries. So we do have to enter those. Yeah, I, well, I, can, I can attest to that. My mom just passed away in April, and she was 94. And, uh, yeah, probably from about 19, you know, once she was 75 on up, she probably, yeah, was still trying to explain, just explain credit, you know, not so much credit card, but explain how you can go on the computer and do this. I remember yeah. trying to teach my dad a little bit how to get on the computer a little bit. He, when he finally kind of figures some of it out, he just got was so cool that he could do that. And uh, But, yeah, no, so, yeah, like you say, it just, it's just a norm for them. They're, just, they're not this generation. Right, and, you know, we do have a large contingent, um, at least we did have. I'm not sure what's going to happen going forward, but con a contingent from New York City that would come up on buses from the senior centers down there. And so they would take the paper applications, hand them out, gather them up, and send them to me in one package, which was always nice that somebody took care of that. Um, but we would have anywhere from 150 to 200 different athletes that would come up on these buses and spend the week in Cortland. 
I'm trying to remember just back some of the other things that have gone on. I know there, for a while there was a lumberjack uh, <laughs> event that went on a, a few times um, here in Cortland. Yep, we we helped to host that um, just to kind of get that off the ground. But then, you know, people change as far as who's got the time to actually put those things on. And that was something that, um, you know, we ran for a few years and then that kind of went by the wayside. We did some snowmobile races, you know, out with Dave Law out at CNY Power Sports. You know, they've been a great partner to us, too, as far as helping us get four-wheelers. Um, so, you know, we, we have worked with a number of community members trying to put some different things on. If anybody's got an idea for something they want to try, we're certainly open to it. You know, we'll, we'll try anything once and see what happens. <laughs> um, I know... This would be a tough question because at some point somebody will probably get left out of this conversation as we talk about. But there are, there's our, you know, a lot, a lot, depending on what goes on, you know, a lot of the local businesses do get involved. But there are some more like corporate people that have been involved, you know, are always there for you. Who are just a shout out maybe to some of the people that have really helped the uh, the regional sports council with uh, what they're doing. Well, I think CNY Power Sports definitely um, has been our partner since we started this um carbon copies on main street they're a printer i go to them last minute all the time with things and they always come through for us so that's great you've got bernard's and graph techs you know we try to alternate between the two to get our stuff printed um th just the restaurants in town you know sometimes especially this past summer it's been tough staff wise for them so we do try to uh, work with them. Tammy Timmerman, who's the, the head of the Restaurant and Bar Association, you know, for our community, um, she tries to help, help me get the word out to the restaurant so that they're prepared. And also the hotels. You, there's not too many um, communities, Tom, where you've got the hotels that are willing to work together like ours are to make sure that everybody's accommodated. And people comment on that. They realize it and they comment on the fact that you know what a great place this is it doesn't matter if you stay at the Hampton or the Holiday Inn Express you know it's everybody's friendly everybody knows you're here and why you're here so that goes a long way when you're traveling for tournaments so like I said you're open to anything you know potentially as the response some are there th anything in the works right now that uh, we really haven't seen in the Corland County area that uh, you guys might be coming up with well, I think we are going to try to explore pickleball a little bit more and see what else we can we can do with that. Um, we put on two track and field events this year outside of the senior games, and we hope to expand that. That was through a relationship uh, with SUNY Cortland. So I think those two things are really the two areas we're going to focus on going forward. Can you believe, like you said, you started in 2004, the, the Sports Council got underway, uh, the Regional Sports Council, um, what you guys have accomplished in 17 years and, you know, what the, the future could be? Is it, can you kind of wrap your head around what's happened? Never in a million years did I think it would turn out to be what it, what it has. I mean, I'm thrilled with the fact that we've contributed close to $50 million in economic impact since we started. And, you know, that's not even something that we – we could even put a number to when when we first started so you know it's nice that we've we've had these relationships it's great that things keep coming back but you know other communities are starting to realize that that there's some money to be made in sports tourism so we've been lucky for the last 17 years that we've not that we've had a uh, we haven't certainly been the only place you can go for that kind of thing but we uh we've been fairly lucky with the partners that we have but you're going to see some other communities stepping to the plate. And as we bid on things, more and more, you know, we find Rochester is is really active. Binghamton has a, a sports commission. So, you know, there's there's other places around the state that want the same business. So we're trying really hard to make sure we keep what we have. And one of those examples that Rochester used to host forever, and like you said now, it's become kind of more of a staple here in the in Cortland is that state cup the youth soccer I remember everybody's always said oh, we always got to go to Rochester you always got to go to Rochester and uh but like you said now you know Cortland you know everybody is out this side of this you know center and the eastern part of the state or saying at least Cortland is more yeah. located I mean that's the same thing you get with the you know the 
New York State Public High School Athletic Association, why is certain things always down in Long Island? Why are certain things always like towards Glen Falls? Why are things in different areas? But so, but like you say, everybody is now. You know, you're like you say, more of the cities are realizing there is. You know, there's if this is done right, there's a way to you know promote your area right and you know first of all you've got to have the facilities you've got to have the hotels you've got to have the restaurants to support it all and and we're fortunate that we have all those things but as some of these um, tournaments and and opportunities grow there are some things that we just can't you know we can't handle here but i feel pretty good about the things that we do have and the fact that they keep coming back year after year i've just said the potential that Gutcher's Lumber Sports the sports complex out there is is unknown yet what the true potential of that facility is. But uh, what you know what you know as that develops and becomes more and more popular. I mean, not that you want to phase out Cortland High School or Homer High School or even TC three helping out of SUNY Cortland, but it's going to get to a point where you know if the expansion continues the way it should, at the out there. You could really put it self-contain almost anything right there in that in those facilities down the road. We could. We're we're still going to need um, access to other turf fields because as baseball expands out there, you know what we planned at first to have you know maybe eight multi-purpose fields. Maybe we'll only end up with four. So when we host something like state cup, you know it'd be great if all the games could take place on turf fields and not have to mix grass with turf. So there's always going to need be a need for us to still use TC3 and Cortland and Homer and SUNY Cortland. It's just that we'll be able to take advantage of the scheduling, the ease of scheduling when it's a place that we're in control of. So I think that's the biggest um, attraction as far as the sports council goes. You brought up another good point. As you mentioned that, you know, you know, we need, we need turf field and grass fields. A lot of people are saying, why aren't you going to put grass, some grass fields out at Gutchess? But so many, even just the athletic director, everybody counter. Yeah, it may seem like it's nice to have the grass, and but the overall maintenance, it's turf is just much easier to maintain than not. You know, worry it's not weather specific enough. It's just more easy. And I still, I, I've still so many studies being done. You know, how many are more getting hurt after playing on turf mm-hmm. compared to grass? That's going to be a great debate. That's going to go on forever and. People will be able to skew numbers whichever way they want to make make that apply. But it, really, turf fields are just it's just more maintenance, you know, free work that you know right. you can deal with. Right, definitely, definitely more maintenance friendly. But it all a lot of it has to do with our weather up here. I mean, can you imagine trying to host a girls' state soccer tournament on grass fields in the middle of November? I mean, sometimes we have not sometimes we've had to shovel the turf field. You know, we've had to get the snow off of it if that happened on grass it would be you know it'd be unplayable so for what we do for the tournaments that we bring in and to take advantage of the calendar for as long as we can we we have found that turf is probably the better way to go well is there anything else you'd like to say about the council or about the area or what the plans are Coming up here, like you said, Gutches, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, getting the referendum up to, to vote on the fields. And I said, I think we hopefully we've given some people a little more clarity on what's uh, going on out there. Well, I think, you know, people just need to realize that there's always two sides to every story. And we've been working with PBR for a couple of years now. And I think that, um, you know, they're the partner that that we wanted to work with. And so as we progress through this, hopefully people will realize that, that it is a good thing for us. And, and you can't just look at the numbers specifically out at Gutchess. You've got to look at the big picture. You've got to look at what they bring in economic impact to our community. Because without them in the summer, um, it'd, be, it'd be tough to replicate what they do. All right. Well, with that, uh, Michelle, will say thank you for taking time to talk to us today. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. And that'll do it for this edition of TV on the Net. Today's show brought to you by American Credit Union for every day for everything. Located next to Little Caesars at 3944 Route 281 in Cortland. By Right Angle Creek Farm and Marathon. All natural, pasture-raised Angus beef from our farm to your table.
by the Cortland Voice, the exclusive media partner of TV on the Net. For all your local news and sports in Cortland County at no cost to you, check out CortlandVoice.com. By the Royal Auto Group on Route 281 in Cortland, the home of no hassle, no razzle-dazzle. Check them out at RoyalAutoGroup.com. By Yeaman Real Estate, at the entrance to Yeaman Park off I-81, exit 11 in Cortland. By DJ Philly C, make your wedding, party, or event extra special with the best DJ in the area. Contact DJ Philly C at 607-745-4346. By Nikki C's Hometown Pizzeria and Meatball Shop on Route 281 next to Hobo's in Homer. Find them online for fast, secure ordering or call 607-749-5300. They have a unique menu with dietary-specific options. Nikki C's, your grab-and-go specialist. By Graftex, located on Elm Street in Cortland. Founded in 1984, they provide custom screen printing and embroidery for teams and local businesses. For over 30 years, Graftex has continued its dedication to servicing customer needs for innovative graphic designs, custom and printed apparel, and quality service. They are easy to contact at 1-800-417-7791. By Seven Valley Agency at 18 Tompkins Street in Cortland for all your personalized insurance services. Give them a call at 607-753-1821 or check them out online at sevenvalleyagency.com. Seven Valley Agency, where your money matters, our advice counts. By Riley's Cafe and Marathon, open seven days a week for sit-in dining in a friendly family atmosphere. Riley's also offers carry-out service and catering for some events. Check them out on, online at Riley'sCafe.com or call 607-849-6434. And by Isaac Merger Studios, handling all your photographic needs in central New York since 1982 at 74 Hamlin Street in Cortland. Give them a call at 607-756-0849 or check them out online at IsaacMerger.com or on their Facebook page. So from my guest, Michelle Phelps, and yours truly, Tom Vartanian, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon.